Redux is one of the oldest state managers for React and one of the most used library in enterprise applications. We can also say that it is a pattern, since it provides several rules to create your architectures. The main advantage is that you can easily split your user interface from the business logic, and each part of this logic is defined by the specific element. We have actions, store, selectors, middlewares, and so on. In the last year, it has a huge boost thanks to Redux Toolkit and Redux Toolkit Query, which really simplify its usage and add several new interesting features. Hi, my name is Fabio Biondi, I'm a front-end instructor from Italy and I love both Angular and React. Usually I create my content in Italian only, but I decided to create videos in English to improve it and try to reach more people. Anyway, I hope you will like my channel and don't forget to subscribe it. But let's stay on the pattern and see how it works. Redux is composed of a single state called store, organized in different reducers that are simple functions that can handle a specific portion of the store in an isolated way. This process is very similar to the user reducer hook, which I described in the part one of this video, and you can find the link in the description below. The component can read the state through selectors, which we can imagine as a query to the store. The only way to update this state from a component is by emitting an action, not directly, but using the reducers function that will update the state based on the emitted action. In the case of asynchronous actions, we have to use another feature called middleware, and there are different types, tank, which use simple function, or saga, which use generators, Redux Observable, which use RxJS, and so on. This middleware takes care of managing side effects, such as a call to the REST API or routing changes. When the UI needs to update some data of the store, a component can emit an action, the middleware perform a fetch, acquire the result, and emit another action, for example, a success or a failed action. But the state update is always done by the reducers functions. Now, let's see how we can configure the store. We use the configure store function that accepts a root reducer. That is an object that represents our store split in several reducers, each that will manage a specific portion of the store. But before talking about reducers, let's see what is an action. And I remind you, this is the only way your components can notify Redux to update the store. An action is a sort of command that describes a specific operation and is used for two scenarios, updating the store, through the reducers, or trigger a side effect, such as a call to a REST API, in this case using a middleware. Using the createAction function provided by Redux Toolkit, we can easily create an action in which we define the type of action, a string to describe its behavior or what the action does, and the type of the action payload. In this slide, I use TypeScript to easily define what type of data we can pass along with the actions. The first action in this slide can receive the string dark or light, specified using a literal type. The second one will receive a language type, probably EN for English, IT for Italian, and so on. The action type should exactly describe the task performed by the action. For example, in this case, the actions will be used to update some global configuration, in one case the theme, and in another the current language. So, the action type is used from Redux to identify them, but it's also using Redux developer tools that I will show you later. As I already said, the store is organized into several reducers. Each reducer has two goals. Initialize a specific portion of the store, for example the configuration, and update it based on their actions. When the update lang action is emitted, the reducer or several reducers intercept this action and update the lang property based on the payload we sent. In the past, reducers were simple functions with a switch case, but Redux Toolkit now includes a create a reducer utility to simplify it and make it fully typed if you are using TypeScript. Redux Toolkit and Toolkit Query now include other great utilities such as create slice, which allow us to create action and reducer together in just one function or create API, which also manages side effects such as calls to REST API, automatically generate derived state for handling errors, pending, and so on. It manages the cache, pagination, and much more. Well, we have created the action and we have configured the store and its reducers. 
Now, let's see how a component can get data from the store through an hook called useSelector, which allows us to acquire a portion of data from the store. But we can also emit an action using the useDispatch function. When a new action is dispatched, all the reducers are processed, and those that handle the emitted action will be able to update the portion of the store they are responsible for. Only the component that subscribe to this specific portion of the store will be rendered again. In any case, selectors are often not written in line, as in this slide, but I create them in separate files so that can be reused almost anywhere in the application. Selectors are also memoized to prevent them from being recalculated even when not necessary, and this is especially useful when selectors involve complex operations or multiple portions of the store. So far, we have seen how an action can be directly handled by the reducer to update the store. And in the case of asynchronous actions, for example, when I submit a form, I may need to invoke a REST API, save a product on the database, retrieve an ID, and only after all these operations are successfully done, we want to add the product to the store emitting the add product success action and passing the result as payload. In case of errors, we dispatch the add product failed action. In this slide, we see the use of tank, the middleware included by default in the Redux toolkit. Anyway, we have several other solutions such as Redux Saga or Redux Observable, but Tank works very well with toolkit and toolkit query and takes full advantage of their power. So I suggest to start your experience in Redux by using it. At this point, our reducer should handle the successful or failure actions and update the store accordingly. But why? we need to set up all these, which requires a greater effort than other solutions. First of all, because Redux is now well known by many React developers. So for a company, it's very easy to find a React developer that uses this pattern. It allows us to completely isolate the user interface from the architecture. And in turn, its operation is well isolated in a specific construct. I mean, action, reducer, middleware, and selector but especially because we have the Redux DevTools, an extension for your browser that, in my opinion, is the biggest advantage to use Redux. Using this extension, we can trace each action. In this case, you can see the success of some asynchronous operations. And we can verify how each action has impacted the store, checking the state panel or analyzing their differences between the previous state and the current one. For example, the last action in the action history panel refers to a simple task of a time tracking application in which we can start, suspend and close a task. This mechanism is called time travel debug and can be very useful to trace all the previous actions that have generated the bug, which parts of the state impact, and we will always have clear what is the flow of our actions and the data modified by each of them. Of course, Redux can be used to share data between components, but it's also very useful, for example, in the case of very complex flows or a complex user interface to keep track of everything. We can also export the snapshot of the application at a certain point of its life cycle in a JSON file and share it with the rest of the team in order to recreate the scenario of a potential bug. But it's also very useful for easily synchronize the entire application state with the local storage, useful for an offline application, progressive web application, or to manage undo and redo action by returning to the previous snapshot and much, much more. Of course, it's definitely not the simplest solution we have seen, but there are many advantages. But in the end, which technique you should use? Here I have created a table that you can consult later. Obviously, I'm generalizing, but I could summarize my thoughts with some considerations. If we have a group of components in the same branch that must remain in sync with each other, I probably use use state or use a reducer with drilling props or composition. We can also use context. Is this group of components on different branches or on many levels of nested components? A micro state manager like Zustand or Valzio could be useful and they are very simple to use. Do I need to share data between pages? Honestly, I love Redux, not just for DevTools, but because it allows me to have discipline, some constraint, and a pattern that many developers already know. However, Jota and Recall are also great choices. Is my view very complex, or do I have to manage a scenario that involves many sequential operations that are difficult to maintain? 
I prefer to take advantage of Redux, even if it was born as a global state manager, but Redux dev tools are really amazing. So, this video was the last part of my playlist about state management in React. If you liked it, please let me know right in a comment and don't forget to subscribe my channel. Bye.